there. So in this video, we're going to look at solving rational equations. And a rational equation is an equation that has one or more rational expression um, in it. And um, you'll, of course, since it's an equation, it's going to have that equals mark. You're going to find that we're going to utilize the idea of multiplying by our common denominator to solve our rational equations. So um, we'll start here with this first introductory example and then dive right into solving these rational expressions. This um, first example will give you a taste of um, solving rational equations. All right, so we're using that same formula that we had in a previous set of notes that a group of friends are going to rent a condo and it costs $1,200 for the weekend of golfing and they plan to um, pay equal share. And then this is the formula that can be used to find the cost for um, um, of going of renting the condo if n number of people <clears throat> um, attend. Um, C represents the cost, N represents the number of friends. I want to know if um, if the friends want to spend only $200 each, how many people then have to share the condo? So that $200 is a cost, that's got to go in for C, and I'm going to be solving for my N this time. So this is this is where, where we're headed here in this set of notes. In order to solve for n, you'll notice that n's in the denominator. I've got to get it out of the denominator. So I'm going to multiply by n on both sides. In our case here, that n also happens to be the common denominator. Okay, and that's so that's going to be our technique is that we're always going to multiply by the common denominator. So that here on the right hand side it cancels out and just leaves me with 1200. On the left hand side I've got n times 200 or 200 n. Last step to get in on by itself, undo that multiplication, just divide, cancels out, so n equals, I can cross off as many zeros as they have in common, so 12 divided by 2, so we'd have six friends then are going on the trip, would have to go in order for the cost to be just $200 per person, okay? All right, so how do we solve a rational equation? So here are your steps. You're going to first find your common denominator, and um, you're going to multiply each term in the, in the equation by that common denominator, and then you're going to uh, solve it. Um, in some cases, the variables may cancel out, and you end up with a contradiction, such as 2 equals 3. In a case like that, we'd say that the rational equation then has no solution. You're always going to want to check your solutions whenever you're solving rational equations because it is possible to incur what are referred to as extraneous solutions. So you'll, what will happen is you'll check your answers that you get back into the original equation. And it might be possible that you have two, you know, several solutions, only one solution, um, or none of your, or no solution. Okay, so what I've tried to do then on the next um, couple of pages here with these examples is to give you... Um, um, a couple give you examples of covering all of that and I'm going to try in the video to um, give you representation of, of each of those types. All right, so here in example one it says you know solve your rational equation and you're going to check your solutions. You have to check the solutions in these problems, okay? All right, so uh, first thing I'm going to do, I've got all these fractions here. I don't want to work with this fraction. I want to get rid of it. I'm going to multiply by my common denominator. So between this fixed, all right, so between x 3x and 2, I need to get my common denominator, so let's do numbers first. So what's the number that 2 and 3 will both go into? I fully agree that's 6. And then as far as letters go, I have 1x, 1x, no x's, so I'm just going to need 1x up here in my common denominator. And now I have got to multiply every term by 6x. So with that first term, and I'm going to put a 6x over all three of the terms, so that way I can show my cancellation, okay? So now with that first term, when I multiply 6x times 1 over x, this x is in the numerator, that's one's in the denominator, so it cancels out. It leaves me with 6 times 1, it's just 6. Move to my next term. Those x's cancel out again because one's up top, one's on the bottom. Now you can, we can do it this way. We can do 6 times 2 is 12, and then 12 divided by 3 is 4. Then over here, um, I don't have any, the x will not cancel out, but I can do 6 divided by 2 which is 3, 3 times 1, maybe, and it might be easier if I showed it like this. I've got 1 half times 6x over 1. Here's what's happening. I'm doing 2 divided by 2 is 1, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and so then I'm left with 1 times 3x, which is just 3x, okay? That was what was happening in each of those parts. So now let's clean up. My goal is to solve for x. So on the left-hand side, 6 plus 4 is 10. Right-hand side, i got my 3x. Get x all by itself, divide by 3. So I'm finding a solution to be 10 thirds, 
Now I need to check and make sure, is 10 thirds really a solution? So does 10 thirds make this equation true? So here's the check. Oops, let me make this a little smaller. All right, so 1 over base of x, I'm putting in 10 thirds, plus 2 over 3 times 10 thirds equals 1 half. All right, so that first one, um, anytime you, in order to divide a fraction, it's copy, change to multiplication, and you flip the bottom, so 1 times 3 tenths. And the second one on the bottom, the 3's cancel out and leaves me with 2 tenths. And then the right-hand side's already done. So essentially now I'm left with 3 tenths plus 2 tenths, which is 5 tenths. And 5 over 10 can be reduced, divide them both by 5, 1 half. So since they're equaling each side, on, uh, they're equal on both sides, then what that means is that x equals 10 thirds is your one and only solution. Okay, so that is the solution. If I got down here and these two numbers did not equal one another, then 10 thirds would not be a solution, and we'd say here that, that we had no solution to this equation. Okay. All right, I'm going to scoot on down and let's look at um, letter C together. All right, so I want to multiply by my common denominator in an, um, in an equation like this. So to get my common denominator, I first need to factor that first, that left-hand side. All right, so the only way to multiply to give me a squared, a and a. The most common way to multiply to give you eight, two times four. I want a negative two in the center, so you got to make four negative and two positive, and then two times negative four gives me negative eight. All right, so then thinking about, so I'm going to just... I'm just going to cross that off. So now that's my new denominator there. So now let's think about getting our com what our common denominator is. So I'll put a little bracket here. So common denominator, I'm going to need a plus 2 and a minus 4. The second term doesn't have a denominator, so that's going to work out. And then the last term, I don't have anything new and different. So my common denominator then is going to be that a plus 2 times a minus 4. And I'm going to multiply it times all three terms, a plus 2 times a minus 4. And even this last one, a plus 2 times a minus 4. All right, so when I multiply the first, the left-hand side by that common denominator, it completely cancels out. And it just leaves me then with the numerator. Okay. On the right-hand side, then, 1 times that denominator, still that denominator. So I have a plus 2 times a minus 4. The next term, this 4 over a minus 4 times my common denominator, what cancels out? The a minus 4's. So that leaves me with plus 4 times a plus 2. Okay. All right, so now we've just got to go through and start cleaning up. All right. So the left-hand side I can't do anything with, so I'll just bring it down. The first set of parentheses are side by side, so that means to multiply. I'm going to FOIL that together. So I'm going to have a squared first outside minus 4a inside, last. In the second parenthesis, i got a 4 that needs to be distributed. Okay. Now let's clean up. On the left-hand side, nothing can be cleaned up, but on the right-hand side, I've got like terms, so let's clean that up. I've got a squared. Um, I've got a negative 4a and a positive 4a, so they cancel out. But I do have then a plus 2a. And then I've got a negative 8 and a positive 8, so they cancel out. So that cleaned up nicely. So now from here, let's get, um, let's start getting things all together. So let's collect our a squareds together. So let's subtract a squared from both sides. So then the nice thing about that, what happens to those? They cancel out. All right, so then I'm left with 4a minus 2 equals 2a. All right, then at this point, that 2a is sitting over there all by itself, so let's bring the like term, that 4a, over to join it, crossing the equals marks. I'm going to do the opposite, so subtract 4a from both sides. Negative 2 equals negative 2a. Last step to get that a all by itself, divide by negative 2. So a equals a positive 1. Okay, so now I need to go in and I need to check. I go back to my original equation. Everywhere I see an A, I'm plugging in 1. So I have 1 squared plus 4 times 1 minus 2. The bottom, 
I might need to erase there so I can see it better. So that now is 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 8. Right hand side I've got 1 plus 4 over 1 minus 3. Everywhere I saw an A I plugged in 1. Alright so now I just want to clean this up. So let's see up top I've got 1 plus 4 is 5. Take away 2 so that gives me 3 on the top. 1 minus 2 minus 8, so that would be a negative 9. Alright, on the right hand side then I have 1 plus Did I write that right? I didn't. Um, this should be, it was, it, your denominator was a minus 4, so 1 minus 4. Sorry, just I just caught that. All right, so then this is 4 over um, 1 minus 4. That's going to be a negative 3. All right, so now I can reduce this. That'll become a negative 1 third. And then if you were to if you were to clean this up over here, 1 minus 4 thirds, that is also going to give you a negative 1 third. So I'm getting the same thing on both sides. That tells me that A equals 1 is my one and only solution. Okay. All right, so now let's flip it over, and let's go to our next example. So let's pick out our common denominator. Well, here the only denominator is x minus 2, so that's going to be my common denominator. I am going to multiply every term by x minus 2. So I'm going to put an x minus 2 with every term. All right, so when I multiply that first term, those x minus 2s cancel out and just leaves me with x. Uh, minus, then I'm going to have 3 times x minus 2, so I'm just going to write it like that, bring down my equals mark, then I'm going to have 1 times x minus 2, and then the last term, those x minus 2's cancel out, and just leave me with my plus 2. Alright, let's do my distributing. So I take a negative 3 and distribute it, so minus 3x plus 6, take the 1 and distribute it. Okay. This combine like terms, so this will be what? Negative 2x plus 6 on the left hand side, and then just x on the right hand side. Alright, then at this point, that x is sitting over there all by itself, so let's take the 2x over to join it, because remember you want letters on one side, numbers on the other. 6 equals 3x. Divide by 3 on both sides, so x equals 2. Alright, so now let's check to see if 2 is a solution. So here's our check over here. Go back to my original equation. Everywhere I see an x, I'm plugging in 2. So 2 over 2 minus 2 minus 3 equals 1 plus 2 over 2 minus 2. Hopefully right here from the get-go, anytime you've got a value that's going to make your denominator equal to 0, you're going to be, it's not going to be a solution because 2 divided by 0 is undefined on both sides. So, I remember, remember, like we said before, 0 in the numerator is okay, and that equals 0, but if 0 is in the denominator, NO, not defined. So, that's telling me then that x equals 2 is not a solution. Um, so, x equals 2 is not a solution, because it's making the equation undefined, and so therefore this equation has... No, so I'll say here the equation has no solution. That would be our final answer there. Okay, so that's the importance of checking yourself. All right, then I want to come down and do letter G with you. All right, so get my common denominator. I need to come over to this right-hand side, and I need to factor it. Uh, let's see, so the only way to multiply to give me D squared, the most common way to multiply to give me 15, I want a positive 2, so I'm going to have to make 5 positive and 3 negative. Alright, and then it checks 5 times negative 3 gives me negative 15. Then picking up, getting my common denominator then, I've got d minus 3. I'm going to need the d minus 3, I'm going to need the d plus 5, and then there's nothing new and different on the right hand side, so that's going to be my common denominator. So I am going to be multiplying by d minus 3 times d plus 5. And i got to do that to all three of these terms, d minus 3 times d plus 5. Bracket there. And let me use a different color. 
and start canceling out. So when that first, um, when the multiply the common denominator times the first term, the d minus 3's cancel out, and I'm left with 2 times what's left over, d plus 5. Move to the second term. This time the d plus 5's cancel out, and I'm left with d times d minus 3. And then the right-hand side, the full denominator cancels out and just leaves me with the right-hand side of 16. All right, so now let's clean up. So distribute. Let's write this in descending order. So I would have what? D squared minus D plus 10 equals 16. All right, in order to solve an equation like this, I need to get it equal to zero, so I'm going to pull that 16 over. So d squared minus d minus 6 equals zero. All right, in order to solve that, I've got a factor. The only way to multiply to give me d squared. The most common way to multiply to give me 6. 3 times 2. I want a negative 1 in the center, so I'm going to have to make 3 negative, 2 positive. Set both of those equal to zero and solve for d. So I've set d minus 3 equal to zero and d plus 2 equal to zero and solve for d. So I'd add 3 here. So one of my solutions is d equals 3. Subtract 2 on both sides. The other solution that I'm getting is d equals negative 2. What that means here is I'm going to have to check both of these solutions to see if they um, work. However, just like you just got seeing, just got finished seeing in the previous problem, Hopefully you can already see what would happen if you were to plug 3 in to your first denominator. It's going to make that very first denominator equal to 0, and so therefore I already know that one's out. Okay, so, sorry. So I'm just going to put here, makes denominator equal to 0, so not a solution. That one's a definite no. Okay. Now d equals negative 2 is not um, being obviously restricted, so we do need to come over and check it and see if it will um, get restricted otherwise. Okay, so everywhere I see a d, I'm plugging in negative 2. So I have 2 over negative 2 minus 3 plus d. Negative 2 over negative 2 plus 5. Everywhere I see a D, I'm plugging in negative 2. Alright, so let's clean up. So this would be 2 over negative 5. And this is going to be negative 2 over 3. This one's going to give me 16 over, that's a positive 4 minus 4, so over negative 15. And sure enough, if you if you were to combine both of those fractions, and in, in order to combine those fractions, doing it by hand, you'd have to get a common denominator, um, which would be 15. I'll show that work, just so that you can see it, but you could also use your calculator. 5 goes into 15 3 times. 3 times 2 is 6, so that would be a negative 6 fifteenths. 3 goes into 15 5 times. 5 times 2 is 10, and it's also negative. Combine those together, you got negative 16 fifteenths on the left hand side and negative 16 fifteenths on the right hand side. We just typically keep negatives up top. And so that checks out. So d equals negative 2 is your one and only solution there. Okay? All right, that finishes up this section. Thanks a lot. Bye.